Chapter 15, Class 54A The Octanian Twos use a telepathic ability. They will enter the mind of their target, sensing their thoughts and predicting their next actions with absolute precision. An image of a large, brute-like creature flickered onto the titanic screen at the back of the room. Two identical holograms of the same creature appeared to either side of the presenter, rotating slowly to demonstrate from all angles. Initially, there were only occasional sightings, rumours even. Some believed they did not exist. The presenter paused. He looked troubled. Large, dark bags were under his drooping green eyes. Despite his weary appearance, his short-cut hair and immaculate white uniform gave him an overall clean look. We now know that the rumours were true. Increasingly, we are receiving reported sightings of Octanians. Often they are being used in final assault operations, mopping up the final survivors. This lesson has been prepared to... An explosion sounded, drowning the presenter's voice. The overhead lights flickered as the sounds of further explosions peppering their targets swept through the room. The presenter stood motionless, eyeing the roof and waiting patiently. Perimeter shields at Harkus Roll have been breached. The soothing, mechanical voice spoke as calmly as if this news were the weather for the day. The presenter rushed over to a nearby holographic panel, his fingers intricately dancing about the controls. Speak of the devil, he muttered in an undertone. He cursed silently. He then raised his voice for the entire room to hear. It seems this lesson is being delivered in perfect timing. The screen at the rear of the room flickered and displayed a video feed. Harkus Roll was written at the bottom of the image. Small flying spacecraft made their way through a blasted metal opening. The video feed changed. The craft landed on the surface of the planet and a myriad of creatures burst from it. Lagging behind were three Octanians. We will have to be fast. They could reach us within ten minutes. The change in atmosphere was palpable. Across the room, the various seated occupants loaded ammunition and held their weapons firmly, some resting the tip of the weapon on the desk before them. People bent their necks from either side and sat rigid, upright and attentive. This video feed is the highest quality transmission we have captured of an Octanian Vornan conflict. The presenter was pacing back and forth once more. He clicked a button on an implement embedded within his arm, and the screen behind changed. It showed a heads up display, a desert like world, with large structures rising from the barren ground. A panoramic holographic video feed appeared from each of the desks in the room. A soldier in plated armour was moving across the desert landscape. From the screen, the planet surface appeared to shake slightly. The reverberating ground carried through into the room, and a loud roar exploded from seemingly close by. An Octanian rounded the corner, barring its teeth and flexing its enormous muscles. It pounded toward the soldier. Instinct took over. The soldier took aim and unloaded plasma. Preemptively, the Octanian darted out of the way of the incoming plasma. Again, the soldier fired and the Octanian predicted his movements. The soldier turned and fled, moving into a maze-like structure nearby. He sped along the corrugated metallic surface, panting heavily. Seemingly out of nowhere, the Octanian dropped upon him. Crushed by immense weight, he groaned as he was forced to the ground. He was picked up with one hand and flung like a rag doll. Warning alarms were blaring from the suit. His body was now a limp form. The Octanian lifted him with one hand. Growling in an undertone, it brought its eyes to level with his cracked faceplate. It stared deeply, bringing its face and eyes ever closer. The occupants in the room felt a strange searing sensation in their heads. The man in the helmet gave an agonising yell. His captor dropped him to the ground and let a fierce howl carry out across the room. That is all we have from this transmission. This soldier Yolando was next seen in the Quello system. The image on the screen and the hologram changed. The soldier from the previous encounter was rushing through a large establishment. Brandishing his weapon, he fired upon a group of nearby people. They fled, screaming as they attempted to escape. Laughing manically, the soldier began speaking in tongues. It was completely nonsensical yet the sounds were terribly frightening. The video feed paused. 
Perimeter defense of Harkus Dias breached. Protocol 98 enacted. Evacuating gas chambers. The mechanical voice carried ominously throughout the room. We don't have long to spare, said the presenter. He clicked a button and the video behind resumed. Soldiers stormed upon the lone manic soldier, firing weapons at him. Their aim was true, and within moments his suit was disabled. He fell to the ground, unable to move, warning alarms blaring once more from his armour. He lay against the ground, chanting speech of another world. There is more, said the presenter. But I am afraid this is all I can show for today. Time is running short. You have seen enough to understand the enemy you face. He pressed a button, and now the video feed disappeared, leaving a blue vacant screen and disabling the holograms on the desks. This much I can tell you. We spent three weeks with Yolando. He underwent every rehabilitation available. We were unsuccessful. His condition only worsened with time. More explosions sounded, and the lights flickered off for a brief moment, purging the room into temporary darkness. The building shook violently with the explosions. The sounds of battle were carrying through now. Every encounter we have had with this enemy has ended the same. Every time, insanity. The Octanians kill from the mind. They turn our kind against us. He stopped moving about. His head fell down. His look of resignation in tandem with the weary bags under his eyes gave an appearance of defeat, of resignation. We have attempted many counterattacks against the Octanians. Not one single attempt has succeeded. To this date, there is only one person who has come to face an Octanian and survived, with their mind intact, and they are sitting right in this room. The presenter held his gaze purposefully. Slowly, all eyes and faces traced his stare to the man sitting at the back of the room.